Go, go, go. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Practical GCP. Service account impersonation is a feature that Google Cloud offers for a user account or a service account to impersonate or act as another service account. So service account, as the name suggests, is something you require to get access to Google services. Um, the Service account impersonation, what it allows you to do is when you act as another service account, it typically gives you very granular access to certain Google services that are what you need. So by using this feature, you can run your local development environment where the access Google, Google services is required, or when you're running a production system to have much granular later access, especially in the shared environment such as orchestration engines um, to give you more targeted granular access that following the least privileged best practice. So this makes sure your system um, is designed in a way such that you wouldn't have one service account have access to everything because when if something bad happens this would have a the blast radius is very is, is very big right so it can actually affect multiple areas in your system but if you restrict the service can only have um, specific access to specific services, even in a shared environment, then um, you could achieve much granular control uh, of uh, the access to the services. So this is a really important thing. So the way I would like to talk about this is to give you two use cases on why this is important and useful. So let's start with the diagram here. So if you look at the first use case at the very top, so this one here, um, assume you're a user or a developer, this is actually quite common, uh, that you, you have a laptop, you need to do some local development that requires access to Google services, maybe on a dev environment, right? So the user, as you, may be an admin, right? Maybe you may have quite a lot of actually permissions. You may have the IAM admin on your user account. So to run or access any Google services on your laptop, you know, because you're now trying to run a service, run a program, right? Um, this, this thing can be, you know, very risky, right? So because your user account typically has a lot more permissions, it's not very targeted to the thing you're trying to run. Um, the G Cloud Auth application default login is, well, everyone, you know that when you do local development and require access to Google Cloud services, you typically have to do this. But that generates a temporary token that gets stored in your user directory, right? Um, but if you just use that token, as I mentioned earlier, you would have maybe a lot more access than you should have for the specific thing or the program you're trying to run or develop locally. And um, because that, that, that user account may even, may even have access to the production system, right? So when you try to do some development on your dev environment, this can be very risky. So by impersonate, as a service account. So in this particular case, that you have the service account specifically created to have access to BigQuery on one project, right? So in this case, when you impersonate it or act as this service account, um, you could only have access to the dedicated area for BigQuery, right? So this, this is like a, 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 it achieves very granular control by you as a user, Log in, have this token, then reduce your access to only that what you need, and then to then access the dedicated resources. So there's a number of benefits with this. So first of all, if you're not currently using Google Cloud Auth with application default token, you're using a service account and with a key downloaded from Google Cloud, please stop using that, right? So that key is permanent unless you go and delete that manually, that key is permanent. This causes a problem that let's say if you are a user or someone else is a user in here, they leave the organization, that service account key is still valid. They can do a lot of damage even after they leave the, leave the company. Uh, so using a service account token downloaded from, you know, if you generate a service account to, uh, to, to do your local development, please don't do that, right? Always use this. Um, which is much better secure and is, this is linked to your user account 
but in a large organization or even in smaller organization these days, this user account, the login is typically achieved via SSO. So that stands for single sign-on. So, so when the user joins the organization, they can use the single sign-on to access many systems, including Google Cloud. But when they leave the organization, they simply disable the single sign-on part. So you, you lose access to all of the systems, including Google Cloud. So if you're using the, the authentication through the, uh, the user auth, you're generating a default token. Um, when the user leaves the organization, then this would be invalidated. But if you use the service count token, and that would not be invalidated. So it is really important to remember, especially um, always avoid using keys, right? Always avoid downloading tokens from a Google Cloud if you have a way to, to do it another way. So in this case, the local development is uh, doing the way that you don't need to download the permanent token from Google Cloud to achieve any development that you try to do on your laptop. Um, so the obviously the other benefit is it's much safer, right? You can see that if you just use the default token, which has a lot more permissions than what you would need to do in this particular case for the, for the server you try to run, by impersonating as the service account that has typically a lot access, a lot less access that is locked down to this, let's say the dev environment, right? This is the only thing you can act as. Then whatever you run, there's not much damage you can do because it's only linked to a specific place, but not outside of it. Okay, so that's the kind of the first use case I would like to talk about. The second use case is for a typically a production system. So as you can see here, I've put Cloud Composer here. So this is actually a very good one because Cloud Composer is basically a wrapper of uh, Apache Airflow. So this is a typically an orchestration engine that you can actually have, you, you can typically do a lot of things, right? So in Airflow, you have this context, this um, uh, a unit of running some code called operators. So these operators can load data from other systems. It can uh, run uh, some queries on BigQuery. It can export data into Cloud Firestore. It can do all sorts of things. If you use one service account for Cloud Composer, which there is one that when you create the cluster, you have to assign a service account. And please, again, don't use the default service account that comes with the, with, with the cluster. Always create a dedicated one with less permissions, just to, uh, enough for the cluster to run its basic operations, but don't give it access to BigQuery, don't give it access to Cloud Firestore or anything else, right? So that service account in this case is this one, right? That's attached to the Cloud Composer cluster and it has very limited access. So typically what I'm trying to say is it does not have access to data, right? Then when you have these operators, the specific use case that you can you would want to achieve in this case, you might want to run some queries on BigQuery, right? Or you want point to export something into the BigQuery tables. So this service account here, you'd create specifically to have access to BigQuery. But in another use case, in a different operator in, in, in Airflow, you would have something that uh, you want to export data into Cloud Data Store, right? So in this case, you would uh, uh, give you access to access Cloud Data Store, right? So if you need to, read or load data from BigQuery and export it into Cloud Firestore. And in this particular case, you want to read access on BigQuery, maybe on a project level, if that makes sense. But if it's not, try to give it the least amount of, uh, of access. So that could be a data set level or even table level. Then you can give it right access to Cloud Firestore. Right? So this is how you can control the granular access to a service kind of impersonation. Uh, so you might be wondering like, how do you actually do that specifically in this case in Cloud Composer, right? So this is where uh, Airflow version two comes in. So this, this is the, um, so what they call it is providers. So in, in Airflow two, the code is broken down into providers for each cloud providers. So in this particular case, if you look at this one specifically on the impersonation chain. Um, so what this does is, for all of the Google Cloud uh, operators, right? So in Airflow, you have this option. So this option allows you to impersonate other service accounts. So, and it, it's called impersonation chain because you can impersonate one service account and then jump into another one and another one. So you can actually do multiple as well. It's not necessarily just limited to one. 
this is critically important because if you use in the past and um, in Airflow one, if you want to, um, you know, impersonate as something, this doesn't come with pretty much all of any of the operators. You have to kind of do this yourself, which means you can't use any of the built-in operators. But in Airflow two, with the Google provider or the Google all of the Google Cloud services, you can simply specify which service count or service accounts you would like to impersonate. Then, when the operator runs, it would not use the one that is your default service account. So in this particular case, you can say it's not going to use this one. It will impersonate as one of those specific ones and then achieve the task. So this, 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 this is really important and it follows the least privileged best practice when designing systems, right? Even on a, especially on a shared environment like an orchestrator, which typically has access to lots of different areas. So it's really important you want to restrict what each operator can do and then so then it, it can't so there's two sides to it one side is if that service can't get compromised for whatever reason right this is another reason you don't want to use keys if you run anything on google cloud you do not use keys keys is only required if you have a third party service that doesn't run on google cloud that's when you need a service account keys but if you run anything on google cloud you do not need the keys right but let's say if that service account is still compromised this whoever compromised this service account would also need to find out which one, which service account they need to impersonate as to access these specific services, right? So, so that would compromise your infrastructure that where it, it can't actually do anything. But you then need to find out how to, to impersonate as one of those other service accounts then to achieve the access to data. So the designing systems on the secure from the security perspective is all about making it more difficult to compromise and it's all about more difficult making more difficult to uh, to get access to things right so then uh, then if you have to have one area compromised there's another layer you have to penetrate before you can actually get access to data so that's the two use cases and i've covered today so hopefully you find it useful and that's the end of session today thank you see you next time Go, go, go out.